Do, do you know that all of you, oh, you, one day this, this girl should be a chief? Why? Did these parents allow those children to be married as young at that age? Then do you know now? And then you tell me the most of you. Then you tell me the most of you. Then you tell me the most of Being spoken by a girl, crying to elders that this is not what I want. I want education, but you are forcing me to get married. That's why I chose you. You are here now. It's, you will be the one to, to, to help those girls. A wedding in Malawi. A beaming bride. A proud groom. A happy family. A satisfied community. The local chief bestows her blessing on the union because she has sanctioned it, finding both the bride and the groom of sufficient age to make their own decision. Teresa grew up in Dedza. It is a rural area in the south of Malawi. The area doesn't look that much different from Teresa's childhood. Her father was the chief of the district. Uh, when I, I went to school, then he also go with me and he say bye bye, then he go home. So when I was out at school, I go straight to him. Then when I, I go straight to him, that means there's bananas, uh, everything what he eats, he left it for me. So when I eat those things, then these big brothers and big sisters, oh, look at her. Hey, you think you are superior? Who are you? Hey, we will beat you. Then I go to my father, oh, they said they will beat him. I said, okay, let them try. They will know me that I'm Chief Kachindamon. She was number 12 out of 12 children. Despite being the youngest in the family, her father saw something in her that he did not see in his other offspring. I remember one day my big brother beat me. So my father, when he came from the garden, he found me crying. So he said, why? What is wrong with you? He said, oh, he has beat me. Hey. So he called him, all of them, that I don't want you to beat this child again. She's my favorite girl. So if you beat this girl again, you will see the consequences. Did you know that all of you, oh, you, one day this, this girl, she will be a chief. I was, ah, no, 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 no. So I said, okay, God wins. Teresa was different from other children in rural Malawi. Coming from royalty, she was shielded from some of the harsh realities 
that come from poverty. Her father made education a priority. She would learn of strong women in leadership positions. At her father's urging, Teresa would move out of Dedza to have new experiences and learn modern ideas that she could someday bring home and use to educate her people. She ended up in the Zomba district, where she became a city college secretary for almost three decades. Students, teachers, and administrators all sought her valued advice. We, we looked up to her, not just as an ordinary secretary uh, to the principal, but also as a mother to us as students. Uh, the way she carried her responsibilities in office, the way she would address us as a student, the interpersonal relationship, how she could manage that both with her, uh, the college administrators and with the students. You know, as the students, whether you are a theological student, you just become a student like a child, but uh, she would uh, relate it to you in a mature and a responsible way. Uh, we appreciated that. Her advice to students helped some stay in school and others to avoid personal crisis. <laughs> Teresa supervised the adoption of new technology, such as computers, to update the university's resources. Her good deeds and resourcefulness were reported to key people in Dedza. After the death of her father and eldest brother, she was visited by a senior delegation from her village, including some of her relatives. So they are the ones who chose me to be a chief that time. And they are also the ones who came to Zomba, all of them, 15 of them, who came to Zomba and asked me to, to come home to be a chief. So I said, you know, I can't go there because there's those big brothers. So why me? I'm working here. You can choose those brothers who are just staying there. They didn't have any job. So it's good for them to... Uh, to be a chief. This is the mayor of Norwich. She will find out later that the 15 were respecting her father's wishes and they secretly wanted a woman to effect change. <laughs> they will come back one more time and they weren't taking no for an answer. Then as you, my sister, you and us, whether we like it or not, we are going home. So when I reached here at home, there is a lot of people. When I said a lot of people, it's a lot of people. Because of the, we want to see her, someone was climbing in the tree. We want to see her, we want to see her, we want to see her. <laughs> Teresa came home from Zomba and donned the beads of a chief. Having a female chief was unusual, but most residents of Dedza expected her to act much like her father and other male chiefs over the years. To preside over ceremonies, settle disputes, to keep traditions going, and honor the local culture. But Teresa will soon be confronted by traditions she was shielded from as a child. And she would be shocked. This would change her life 
and the lives of so many of her new subjects. Uh, I saw a girl with a baby on her lap. A baby was crying. So I said, ah, why this girl? So I told her, hey, can you take this girl to you, this baby to your mother? And said, no, she's mine. She's yours. Said, yes, she's mine. How old are you? Then she said, oh, I'm 13 years old. 13 years old? Said, yes, so who is the father of that baby? Then he, he pointed out the boy playing football. So I call him, oh, will you please come? Is this your baby? Then said, oh, yes, he's my baby. Yeah, a baby boy, a baby boy. Teresa needed an explanation from her new advisors. So when I go to see my royal family, I told them that I saw a girl there with a baby, but she said she's 12 years old, but the baby, it's hers. Why? Did these parents allow those children to be married as young at that age? Said, oh, yes. That's why I chose you. You are here now. It's, you will be the one to, to, to help those girls. The new chief sprang into action. First of all, I, I go there, straight to their parents, and terminated that marriage. I terminated myself because I was very, very angry. And anyone did, did you know that this woman, she became, sometimes she became angry because I was always laughing, loyal to them. But that time I was serious. I told them whether we like it or not, you, you must keep your boy. And he, my mother, please take this girl and take care of the baby. I want this girl tomorrow to go to school. And I go there early in the morning, took the girl and talked to the headmaster that please look, look for me, for this girl. I want her to be at school. For three decades, Teresa was surrounded by young college women in Zomba. They had the economic means to go to university. They had professional plans. <laughs> Teresa would learn that poverty in rural Dedza would narrow the options for literally thousands of girls. So it was my time, but the challenge, the challenge is, is that some of these parents, they forced their girls to be married because they have nothing at their homes, even a chicken. Because when they said, well, Hey, we have the rights with our children. Who are you? Who are you? You want to die soon? You are very young, you very young woman. Yes, we know that you are chief. Those stupid loyal families choose you to be a chief. Yes, her authority was questioned and she was threatened. <laughs> Teresa seems friendly, but she can be fierce. She fired those who didn't follow her orders. In Engarifumu, Anna Jaren December, Wombari, and Moses in the Kiragari won't say, Kubanga no ways of Seri, Abango ways of Seri, the Kubita Wichalich. Uchali chata pita, ndikumina ama kakamba, ndacho kakwa mfuma grana na nchi. Pamina mabairo si titapanga nde, pamina suma sentiki ridwa iso, ine ni mabuira kuno gogwa tati itana, a grana na nchi, mungwa tati itana. Ndida agana, a senti kutiwa, kuti sajitika, easy, 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 easy. Ndiju fukaji ya ni mwapanga zumene iso, ndi hindu uti inewa nawa, ana nditawa ira mwasa ziwa. Ndipo sita tero, kajinda moro ada ndujo tado fumu, ada avura jeketi. and she organized loyal individuals and groups at all levels of society to help enforce her rules. Pa 
Ndieno kujoka la pamene popo, zimene zima ati zima chitika. Pa mkilisa no watu uja. Joyce Mkandawire works to educate young women about reproductive health. Her organization is called Janet, the Girls Empowerment Network. Joyce decided to help girls all over Malawi because of her own experiences. Um, I got pregnant myself. Not that I was, I was, I had not been to school, but I have been to school and I had learned about biology. But there was no one really that told me about the sexual reproductive health and um, that uh, whenever I have sex, uh, um, this is what is going to happen. So eventually I got pregnant and eventually I ended up like being forced into marry well, and leaving school. Joyce started by reaching out to young girls and counseling them. But eventually, it dawned on her how society was promoting practices that would forever doom girls to being mothers before they were ready. She was aware of Teresa and some other local leaders who had taken a tough stand. Uh, section 22. Joyce decided to push the government for a law forbidding child brides and she did not give up. So we, we interviewed many girls to say, when do you want to marry? Are you happy with your mother's marriage? Most of the girls said, no, I would rather not get married. I would rather stay single than be in, in a marriage just like my mom or, or, or just like my aunt or just like my guardian. So that, it, it gave us like strength, it gave us a strength that girls have a voice. So the, their voice should be heard. Joyce found one young woman who would become the focal point of her effort to change the rules. Florence's grandmother was poor and traditional and she did what many here considered to be natural. She married her young granddaughter off to an older man who had the means to support them. She was only 14, and then the man made her pregnant. But she was deeply unhappy. Joyce and Janet made a documentary on Florence's plight that tugged at the heartstrings of thousands. Florence's story is what prompted the elders now to see 
uh, their, their injustice which they, they are doing, crying to elders that this is not what I want. I want education, but you are forcing me to get married. So it prompted the elders to now start changing their way of thinking. <laughs> Joyce sees Florence as a heroine, a true agent for change. The Florence story helped amplify it and it helped to give energy to the girls who were considered to be useless, to be considered as um, sex machines, to amplify their voice so that their voice is heard. In 2015, nearly five years after Joyce and Jeanette started fighting, the Malawi government signed a law making 18 the legal age for marriage. Joyce, Teresa, and other women have applauded the measure. But their work is far from over. They would like to see the legal age raised to 21 and are pushing again for it to be a part of the national agenda. There are other practices they would like to abolish. In many Malawi communities, girls are given sexual training once they have reached sexual maturity. A so-called hyena man is then brought to take the girl's virginity so that she will be experienced. The initiation starts when a girl has started her period. They take them to go to some, somewhere. And there, there's these big women who talk to them and told them that now you are big girls. Then after three days, it was the time when they came out from that uh, initiation day. Then when they came out, they found a room, and that room, all those girls, they go there. So these parents, they choose boys to go there, to, I can say, to have sex with them. So that when he, those girls, they, they dye their eyes, they did it to know who, who he is. Then the boys, they just do whatever they want to do to those girls. Then after that, those boys, they go out. So these girls, they didn't know who, who is the boy who makes sex with them. Then he, when they came out, yeah, at that house, then those parents of those girls, they started dancing, meditation, and giving them money, things like now. Now you are old enough, you are big woman. Hey, oh, my girl, baby, my girl, my... Things like that, but it's not safe. It's not good. Teresa faced this firsthand when she was in her early teens. My father, when he came, he came from Deza, he asked my mother, where is Teresa? He said, oh no, eh, you know, eh, this week it's eh, the initiation time. So you mean my daughter is at the, uh, she's there? Oh yes, yes, Abambo, she's there. Why? Who told you to take my daughter uh, to go there? And he came himself to take me out there. I don't want this girl to do anything about this. Please forgive me. Yes, it's my culture, but I don't like it. Especially for my girl. Most girls aren't lucky like Teresa and just have to submit to their fate. Some end up pregnant. In some communities, it has led to the spread of HIV. It is one more tradition that Teresa wants to abolish. This time there is this epidemic, there is HIV AIDS. Can we continue? You as you said you are a cultural gatekeepers. So I ah, no chief. No, 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 no. This is not good. So I said, okay, yes, we must find a good one, but not this one. As far as I'm here, I don't like this hyena in my area. 
so we have been agreed but yes they are agreed but they are that time they are still doing it because they said it's our culture we can't change it now but this time everything has been changed Florence is still angry at her community's traditions but she is pleased that she has affected other young girls' lives. But she does have some doubts about the laws being followed. Joyce echoes her sentiments. The education system is very poor, and even the, um, they say the youth friendly services, yes, it is there, and we have a law, but it's not being practiced. Florence knows that education does not come for free in Malawi. Perhaps someday she will meet Chief Teresa, who has found money for hundreds of girls to go to school. So I tried to call all those uh, children comes from here in Takataka who are working in town that please help me. You are as, ro as royal models to these girls. Will you please help me? Then uh, some they have taken 10, 15, uh, 20, and uh, even the first lady, they, she paid about uh, 12 students. But now she has given even the parents the money so that they can start business, a small business, to help these children. In a scan and zanga, Musa Kubira would be banja muriwin, Munima Vuto, could be no Peter School or Muka Punziri, Muna Magmazis and the Sabah in Munok. A year is many girls. When I'm free, I go around and uh, give breakfast to those weddings. So when I go there, people always dancing, dancing. rotation, things like that. So that's why I want to be here tomorrow to celebrate together with the parents of those girls, because that's what I want. <laughs> Weddings in Dedza are now a joyous occasion for all. And for young women all over Malawi, there is the opportunity for a happy childhood and a strong and mature future family. Chief Teresa celebrates her achievements, but will continue to keep her eyes on the girls in her community. And Joyce and others like her will continue to educate young females and press the government to enforce the new rules so that girls can be girls and someday become content, empowered women. Now there are about 1,445 marriages which have been terminated but I'm still going. Uh, maybe one day I will, will follow my father. I will die, but I will die as a happy chief because now the is changing. Now I feel comfortable.